Hey, it's Aaron from GameEnthus.com, and these are pictures of awards. I figure you should see some, since there are no Game Enthus awards. Well, not yet. Anyway, February is right around the corner, and I still wanted to highlight some of my favorite games from 2017. FYI, under platforms, the first one listed is the one that was my primary platform for that game. So, let's go. As someone who enjoys platformers, and throwing things, Skeleton Boomerang really resonated with me. The levels are selected on a world map that's gated by a couple of items you'll find within the levels themselves. Not necessarily new, but that's how the game is structured. You can also augment, augment your boomerang with different abilities on the fly, and even throw a batarang of sorts. If you somehow tire of the 2D platforming, there are shoot 'em up and vehicle based stages as well. Great platforming, tight controls, huge bosses and conveyances really got me to sink many hours into this hidden gem. I've heard nothing about any ports for this game other than it just being on Steam. So if you have access to a PC, I doubt you need a very powerful one to play it. I highly recommend you check out Skeleton Boomerang. Skeleton Boomerang from Artisanal. I should mention that as well. Shovel Knight Spectre of Torment from Yacht Club Games. This DLC for Shovel Knight happens prior to the events of the original game. Spectre Knight is tasked with finding and convincing his knight contemporaries to join the Enchantress and presumably do evil things. I'm a huge fan of Shovel Knight and I honestly found that Spectre Knight controlled even better than Shovel Knight did, which already had amazingly tight controls. Spectre's jump through attack and wall climbing ability just felt good to do. Just like the other additions to Shovel Knight, it's interesting to get a glimpse into the lives and motivations of characters you previously dispatched. Red Skulls, all new abilities slash upgrades in the town, and rainbow vomiting sentient statues may now return to the world of Shovel Knight incredible. There's also some brooding, you gotta have brooding, everybody likes brooding. Launching with the Switch also didn't hurt. So I get the Switch day one, and I'm playing all new Shovel Knight content. And if you waited long enough, which is okay too, you can play it everywhere else. So, Spectre of Torment. It's good. There's a statue. Vomiting a rainbow. Okay, I'm done. Fire Pro Wrestling World from Spike Chunsaw. As a fan of the series, I was later that Fire Pro made its triumphant return in 2017. After that awful hot garbage mess that was the Xbox Live Fire Pro, Xbox Live Arcade Fire Pro game, the developers could have just given the PC Engine version a new hat, and that would have been a vast improvement over that crap. However, Spike Chunsoft decided to give Fire Pro fans what they had always been waiting for. A new game, no avatars, new moves, create a wrestler, create a belt, and more. So much content. Most importantly, you can now play online and share the aforementioned created content with other players. I couldn't have imagined this in 2003 when I cut my Fire Pro teeth on the second GBA game, but here we are. Little Nightmares from Tarzier Studios. That eerie look accurately sets the tone for the direction that Little Nightmares will go in. Waking up in a suitcase and sure of how you got there is not a really good way to begin any cruise or vacation, but here we are. But that's what the protagonist Little Nightmares is dealing with, along with getting through environmental puzzles and challenges. Little Nightmares tells an interesting story without actually telling you anything. Clearly there is a food chain, and you quickly learn where your place is. Some of the inhabitants, slash guests, or whatever they are, are quite grotesque. This particular one reminded me of a long-armed Freddy Krueger from the very first Elm Street movie. He can't see, but he hears very well, so moving carefully is key. The game succeeds because of the environment, the challenge, and what it sets up for your mind to fill the blanks in. And despite what size it becomes, it truly becomes the stuff of nightmares. Ukulele from Platonic Games. This bee and, and this duck may very well represent Microsoft and or 
the state of large game development within the gaming industry. Well, maybe. I'm not sure. What I am sure of is that squeaks, quacks, chirps, grunts, etc. as a replacement for an actual audible language, human language, in video games is quite polarizing. So when Platonic came out with their crowdfunded ukulele campaign by essentially saying that they were going to be making a Banjo-Kazooie with better graphics, controls, etc. Many people got excited. Then it came out, delivering on, well, to me, exactly what they said it would be. And many people were not really all that pleased. Oh well, I was still pleased. Does ukulele cling to some old tropes and gameplay mechanics that feel dated? Yeah, I'd be lying if I said it didn't. But is it fun? Yes, it is fun. I really like 3D platformers and I sunk many hours into this game and I don't regret a minute of it. And there's also a snake named Trousers. Steam World Dig 2 from Image Inform. Image Inform's original Steam World Dig was a fun game that, from what I've heard, doesn't have a particularly long run time. And I say from what I've heard because, to be quite honest, I never finished it. Yeah, I know, I know. But I did finish and play its sequel. Well, play and finish. You know what I mean. It's excellent. So Dory sets off to find Rusty, the protagonist in the first game, uh, who's gone missing. Along the way, uh, she's going to need some upgrades and have to stop a crazy cult by teaming up with what the cult was worshipping. Imagine that. Meanwhile, earthquakes have the local residents, for lack of a better word, shook. Wait for it. <laughs> Quite topical and sad. So Dorothy will swing her pickaxe, killing enemies and breaking rocks to collect minerals and jewels that she can trade in for money and upgrades. There's so many upgrade options for Dorothy's uh, items and abilities. It allowed me to really prioritize what mattered to me. It didn't really matter so much in many levels of the game, but as you get further and further into it, especially as you get close to the end boss, the final encounter, how you choose your loadout really matters a lot. It's a really tight experience all around. The fast travel really got perfected in this one. And just the variety of environments and just augmentations is just a lot more than I expected. Well done. Ultimate Chicken Horse from Clever Endeavor Games. So any game that I pour hours into with my kids definitely becomes a highlight in my gaming year. So the party box opens, everybody grabs something. Uh, those items are placed in the environment and the goal is to get to the flag, the goal. Because the items stay within the levels and will accumulate during the rounds, hilarity will inevitably ensue. It's a great concept, great fun. I'm honestly surprised that no one else has done this before, but Clever Endeavor did it and they did it quite well. Uh, full disclosure, this game was released via early access in 2016 on the PC, which is where I played the bulk of it, but it was released in 2017 on consoles, so it still counts. Except for the Switch, that's coming out in 2018. So you have no more excuses, you should definitely be playing Ultimate Chicken Horse. There's also creative levels, you can share online, and you can play online. Great game. Super Mario Odyssey from Nintendo. So had I known I'd be unmonetized anyway, due to not meeting YouTube's new stringent requirements, to stay monetized, I'd have added more gameplay. Anywho, Mario Odyssey is a fantastic 3D platformer that gave me tens of hours of enjoyment and repeatedly made me smile. This is Nog. Nog from Co-op. Nog is one of the best experiences you can have with a PSVR and on the PS4, and coming soon to the PC. It's a puzzle game that requires you to interact with what I like to call living, breathing dioramas. Sans bent woogies, of course. Each lunchbox shaped puzzle tells a story, and it can't be completed without you pulling, pushing, twisting, or turning on everything you see, sometimes in a certain order, sometimes not so much. Pay attention as all the clues are provided, should you see the forest, the trees, 
and the pattern hitting in plain sight. Nog is truly something special. The only complaint really is that there wasn't more of it. What Remains of Edith Finch from Giant Sparrow This was a game I played close to the end of the year, and it became one of the best gaming experiences I had in all of 2017. I find the term to be primarily pejorative, so What Remains of Edith Finch is not a walking simulator, but more like an experience simulator. Edith returns home and gains access to parts of her childhood home that were previously blocked off from her and gated, parts she'd never seen before. More importantly, she gets to learn more about her family and imagine what it might be like to walk in their shoes. This game has excellent writing and offers so much variety in terms of gameplay. Truly a well done experience. Well, those were my favorite gaming experiences of 2017. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment, and share what, what were your favorite gaming experiences in 2017. Did you have anything on your list that I had on mine? Was it really a list at all? Okay, now I'm just rambling. Check out some of these videos below and hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching.